That's it. There's your ump shirt. It's that tough. Just whistle and tuck your bottom in. Because, because what that does is that it puts our embouchure in a place that when you compress it by raising the jaw, arching the tongue, increasing the air, pointing the chin, and keeping the corners in, that's, the, that's like, it's like white rat, you know. You can <laughs> but I won't do it. <laughs> You're so glad. The point is, is that if you do those things, then this structure, which I just described, which is jaw back and blowing down, you should roll right down your shirt. Ah, cool. So, if you do that and then bring everything in like the iris of the camera, then it goes like this. Now, if I do the embouchure that's top the book, the target smile, but it doesn't work. So, that's not the embouchure. The embouchure is under. Get the bottom lip out of the way. And then allow the embouchure to work very naturally. By the time I get to the top notes, guys, I know that I've raised my jaw so far that my teeth are touching the bottom lip. I'm saying F. And almost all of the air that comes through is leaking through my front teeth. There's almost no air coming from anywhere else. For those extremely high doses like you just heard. It's so important that the air get through your teeth that when I had my when I broke my teeth off three years ago, a story that I'll tell some other time, and had them repaired, he repaired them too close together, and not enough air would leak between them, and I couldn't play high. After I got healed enough so that I could play at all, I had no high rates. That's scary for me. That's how I made my living. I'm a high guy. So I went back to the dentist and I told him to take some sandpaper and start filing out a space. And he would file and I'd go, no, no more. Okay, that feels about like it used to. When I went home, I had my hair wrench back. Just like that. So, 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 so don't be afraid on the higher levels to let things compress all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do not take sandpaper when you get home. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, the other thing is, is that I don't think you'd want to make it too big a space because then you wouldn't have the resistance you're used to. I think, and so, you know, whatever works, don't mess with it. And if you ever get a, a damaged look, I, had a, I know of a wonderful horn player that had a beautiful high C in junior high school. She underwent several years of braces, and when the braces were done, she couldn't play above a third space C. When, and, this wouldn't happen. And I, this is a student of a student of mine. She called me, what do I do? She can't play her anymore. I said, she's had braces, right? Yes. I said, okay, here's the deal. Take her back to the orthodontist and have him file a space between your teeth, which they had just paid $4,000 to, to take the space away. Oh, Incredibly yeah. enough, if you think about it. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. This is going to work. So she did. She actually took the student, the, the, my, my, my student, the had the student, was there in the room watching carefully, and they made the space between the two front teeth bigger. Still looked pretty, wasn't like, Ugh! but just, you know, <laughs> a little more. And when she got home, she popped off a G, and then has since then popped it up back to the high notes. So, now, when I was a younger player, I couldn't buzz as high as I can now. I had pretty good high range, though, because there's muscular support to be had because of the mouthpiece. It does have this sense of sticking on and helping your muscles kind of stay in place, doesn't it? So I've always felt like you can probably play about a fifth higher than you can buzz around without doing something extreme like arm strong or too much. All right. But that does say something about the mouthpiece. For me, a mouthpiece has to have a really good grip on it. I don't like slippery mouthpieces. I don't like gold plated mouthpieces for me because they're too slippery and they cause me to have to press harder and pinch more to get my higher range. And I recently had this one re rhodium. And since the last time I used rhodium, they've changed the formulation. And this mouthpiece is almost useless to me now. I, I'm actually struggling a great deal because it's too slippery and I don't have the grip I used to have. So, what I've been doing is rubbing the rhodium off that I just paid all that money to have put on. And I've got some sandpaper in my case and I rub off a little more. And now it's almost back to another, now I think it's gold actually. 
and I'm regaining my eye face. So I like the grip. I like a sense of grip. Now, there's all kinds of things we can talk about embouchure uh, and the relationship to embouchure and mouthpiece, and there's no time for that. But you got to have this this mechanical thing, and this is what I want to talk about. So you have mentioned before that it's dangerous to have a buzz. Well, why don't you tell me? Let's just you say it. Well, when I was, I'm guessing this is the time. Yeah. When I was sitting with Larry, you know, I was living in Alpine and I drive in the promo. So on the way in, I would just buzz along the radio or whatever, you know, to warm up. Well, then one day in a lesson, I couldn't play some high note and he's like, well, buzz on your mouthpiece. Okay. You know, and I couldn't do it. And he's like, well, buzz without mouthpiece. And I could buzz. No, it was a B flat, I think, or something. Mm -hmm. so, and, and he's like, well, it doesn't make sense if you can buzz without your mouthpiece. How are you not buzzing it with, like, what? What's going on? So he spent like an hour, like, watching my armature, like, buzz with, with, with that, you know. It's one like, of my just favorite going, hours, too. Like, what is, like, going on with the armature? <laughs> well, what we figured out is I had two different armatures. I had, like, four, one armature for when I didn't have mouthpiece. But then when I put my mouthpiece on, I would just put it wherever different. But, you know, the more I thought about it while you were, while you've been talking, I think kind of that approach of, just more natural if you just said it here, that probably I just was putting my mouthpiece in the wrong place. I would have just put it to where I was buzzing. One thing I've discovered recently, you know? since you've studied with me, I didn't actually ever have, have discovered it yet, is that uh, normally what we do when we buzz on our mouthpiece, and I want you guys to try this for a second. Normally what we do is we find a wonderful place for really good production, particularly in the high range. It's kind of hard to buzz a mouthpiece low without a horn and anchor, I don't know why. But for the high range, we find a terrific place. We hold it in a way that helps, and then we kind of use a little pressure, and we, we find an angle, especially, that gives us really good high range. So let's try that a little bit. Let me show you. If I can buzz like this, I should be able to do this. So try that. See if you can do that. Uh, go ahead and buzz it on here. You see, yeah. And I hear, I hear you guys all playing just as high as me, and I have a. I mean, my high range is what makes. That's what gets me all the. That's why I have ATVs and stuff. So <laughs> I can go. So it's important to me. It's and you guys. I hear it everywhere. So now here's the deal. But when I put my mouthpiece on my horn, I can go. And when I put it on my horn, it's exactly the same. That's my high C, and it's not hard. Because you can hear me doing it. But you, you can do it too, and yet I'll bet you that many of you go, man, I can't just say I see like that, I'll never come back. <laughs> because why? Because there's something you're doing differently when you play than when you buzz. And here's the, what I've been struggling below, well, telling my students who, since I figured this out. I want them to figure out whatever that angle is. What is the position that really works? <laughs> <laughs> and when you play, is it exactly the same as the good position you found? And I'll bet it is, and I'll show you why. I'll show you what it's not the same. It's not the same because you were a little, how, how old were you guys when you started? 11, 11 12, how tall were you? I was four feet. Okay. When you're four feet, the French horn is a big honking instrument. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? What does your band teacher tell you to do? Yeah. Pull that puppy out, put it on the leg, right out there by the knee when you're tiny, and then play. And that's why beginners sound like this. <laughs> You expect them to sound crappy, so you don't complain. But when they get taller, they kind of get taller. They're still playing like this. And remember, embouchures don't work like this. They work like this. 
So you need to have a playing position where the horn is actually down. I know one Doug Hill playing with his horn on his chest. It's like, what? You don't even need to hold that thing. You can just lay it on there. <laughs> it's got such a weird angle. So, yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> do you realize how bizarre? But the thing is, it's so far down. Now, what I do with, with Katie's when I started is I started with a horn on there right there. Because if I'm a little tiny kid, I know it's just hard to imagine, you know, and I'm starting, I've got the right angle. And if I can roll up, it just does this. And I have my horn right back on my body. I don't hold the horn out because I think that's another thing that I think you need more points of contact with the three. Have you ever ridden a three wheeler and then gone to an AT5 and ATV guy can be done? It's come up three times already. An ATV with three wheels will kill you. An ATV with four wheels, you gotta hit something for it to kill you. So, you know, it's a lot more stable. So, you see what it So, I like to have the contact. The point is, is that if you start this way, uh, and they don't, they're not crouching to do it like I am, because they're little. As they grow, they get taller, and then they're like that. And then, by the way, that's the same position as when we stand. And we should have no difference in our position standing or sitting. So that you don't have to like, oh, I can play great sitting, but when I stand, you know, if you ever go that, ah, it doesn't work as well, and it's all tied up. But if you all, if you have exactly the same position, then there shouldn't be any difference. <laughs> so this this whole idea of the same angle being preserved when you play has a lot to do with whether or not you were taught to play in the normal system where the angle's all wrong. So if you have students that are struggling, if you are a student that's struggling with high range, consider this. Hold it back, low down. For high notes. Now when you go lower, you're going to do a little bit. That's another set. All right, so, yeah. so there you go. Uh, you know, we could go on a while, but I don't think we should, because I think it's 1 o'clock. <laughs> You guys have been really fun. Thanks a lot. Yeah.